Hello and welcome to the first episode of Reloaded, the brand new podcast where every week we bring you all the latest news from Defiant Wrestling and our perspective from ringside on everything that's been going on. Dave Bradshaw here with you for this debut episode and I'm excited to be here with one small caveat which is that our production team have decided in their infinite wisdom that they the best person for me to partner up with in this endeavor would be the same man uh, who i share the commentary desk with every week james r kennedy hello and aren't you just delighted i can hear the happiness in your voice dave bradshaw and by the way before we get started here this afternoon or this evening or indeed wherever the lovely people across the world are listening to this i just have one thing to get off my chest go on I believe, with every fibre of my being, that this podcast needs a name befitting its excellence, and I have a suggestion. Well, we've already got a name, but go on. And and what name is that? Reloaded. I already t- we're not listening to the introduction. It was like ten seconds ago. But anyway, yeah, go but on. I just wanted you to say it again, so you could realise how inferior it is to the one I have. Go on in. How about this, Kennedy's rundown? Um, no, we're not, well, obviously we're not calling it that because it's not a show about you. It's about what's going on in, in Defiant. Um, you do look a bit run down last, last time I saw you, by oh, the way. come on. That's, that's bit, just cheap. A bit bedraggled. Like you hadn't been to bed for a few days. Maybe that was just a deliberate hairstyle, but, um, no, absolutely not. We never, we will never be calling it that. Well, I'll tell you why. So bedraggled, as you said, because I was furious with you, Bradshaw, for cheating on me with that, that idiot, Simon Miller. I mean, you're still, you're still not over that, are you? No, absolutely, and I will never be over it. For the record, you you hurt my feelings. All right. Well, I, I can't say I'm going to lose any sleep over it. But anyway, let's let's turn to some more important business than your feelings. Um, Loaded is coming back. We're back on the 9th of December, and every Sunday after that, seven o'clock UK time on YouTube. That's two o'clock Eastern in the US. Um, are you excited to be back on air every week with Loaded? Cannot wait. You see, the thing about Loaded, and this is Reloaded, although I still think it should be called Kennedy's Rundown, but anyway, I digress. The thing about Loaded is it's always action-packed. You never know what's going to happen. And, well, let's just say you get to listen to me every week. And if that isn't enough for you, then I don't know what is. You love it, don't you, Dave? Well, we're trying to get people to tune in, not tune out. So don't don't advertise that part too much that you're on it every week. But anyway, there's lots of questions going in as we go into that first episode. First one... Uh, that I think we've both been thinking about for a, a long time now, um, well, certainly since Refuse to Lose when the news broke, is Gabriel Kidd. Can Gabriel Kidd possibly survive Primate? Well, this is this is the big thing, because if you, if you look at Primate, he's on the comeback trail, and everyone, especially Gabriel Kidd, should be worried, because, you know, I know this beast very well, Bradshaw. And he's likely to take Kid's head as a trophy or a midnight snack. And I'm not sure which one is worse. But I have something to say about Gabriel Kid just quickly. It looks like everything's getting to the young man. And I feel sorry for him. Yeah, do you? Yeah, he's a very sympathetic person, isn't he? Like He's deserving of your sympathy. Well, he's under undue pressure, to be honest. And then he had to get in the ring with that maniac, that lunatic Rory Coyle. I mean, that wasn't fair. Yeah, bless his cotton socks, eh? Um, anyway, I'm sure we're going to be talking much more about Gabriel Kidd and Primate as that situation develops in these uh, first few weeks of, of Loaded, I'm sure. Another thing I've, I've spotted um, that's come up in these past few days just before we've been recording this is, I don't know if you've seen, there's a, U- a video on the Defiant YouTube channel that's come up from the anti-fun police who seem to be hatching a well, what they seem to think is a cunning plan to spoil the fun that they see Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins having. Uh, well, you know... Drake, HT Drake, very well. Now, uh, what is he, Deputy Drake? Now, I'm not sure what what rank he's reached in the anti-fun police, but can you shed any light on what this uh, cunning plan might entail? Well, the anti-fun police lost, of course, to Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins at Fight or Flight, and they've been pretty bitter about it ever since, and with good reason. And I have to say that they conducted themselves with the utmost, um, what's the word I'm looking for, class, for starters, anyway, in that little interview on YouTube. And uh, they were disgusted by, what what was it they said? Weapons, beer, and swearing. That that sounds like a party at your house, which is uh, why I won't go to one, incidentally. But all, all fun and games aside, Bradshaw, it's going to take some really strong tactics, I mean, to muscle out, you know, um, Haskins and Havoc, and especially to take the fun out of Jimmy Havoc. I mean, Jimmy Havoc's idea of fun is just beating people up. And then Drake, 
and the anti-fun police, that's exactly what he has, people he can beat up. So, you know, it's going to, it's going to take a lot to, to take the fun out of them. But you never know, the anti-fun police, you know, they're determined and I, I like their spirit. So that was a very long-winded way of saying you have no idea what the plan is. No, I have no idea whatsoever. No, well, thank you for at least uh, admitting that. But we do know a couple of things that are going to definitely happen on the first episode of Loader. We've got uh, two matches that have been announced uh, as of our recording time here. Um, and one of them is a rematch from something that happened uh, pretty recently here in Defiant. Omari going to go up against Lucky Kid one more time. Omari, of course, was um, uh, victorious when they competed against each other at Fight or Flight. Um can Omari get back to winning ways? He's subsequently lost to uh, John Badbones, Klinger, of course. Um, can he go 2 0 up in this series against Lucky Kid? Well, the thing about Omari, I've been super impressed by the big O. He, he never, he never gives up, and we saw that against John Badbone Klingers. I, I mean, it's no, um, it's no disgrace, Bradshaw, that Omari lost to Klinger. You know, we're talking about the winner of the Ringmaster Tournament, the first Ringmaster Tournament, and a man who was willing to kick the door down of Rampage's den, the defiant heavyweight champion, and go nose-to-nose -nose with him. So we're talking about a ferocious human being, a German psychopath. So there's no disgrace for Amari. As for Lucky Kid, I'm, I'm not so sure what to make of this young man. He seems um, a couple of fries short of a Happy Meal to me. Well, we'll see. He certainly did well in the Pro Wrestling World Cup, didn't he, last year? But, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes when Omari and Lucky Kid uh, compete. I'm sure we'll have much more to say about that next week when we've seen how that one plays out. We also know now, and this is what I want to spend a, a bit of time in our talking about, is the opening match, get this, the opening match on the return of Loaded is going to be that internet title triple threat match, a long anticipated match. Walter who, of course, is undefeated here in Defiant Wrestling, going to defend against two men who separately have won number one contendership matches in recent months. Chris Ridgway and El Fantasmo, a triple threat for the internet title to start things off on the first episode of Loaded's Return. What do you make of that? Well, I would like to say first and foremost, can we maybe pen a little tribute to Messrs Ridgeway and Fantasmo, because I firmly believe anyone who gets inside the ring with that big Austrian Walter, the defiant internet champion, they're in serious, serious trouble. This man is unstoppable, Bradshaw. I've never, ever in my life been in person looking at another human being and thought, you know, I'm sitting down and my legs are moving. I'm trying to run. I'm trying to get the hell out of here. And I think if, if you ask me, if you want some of my managerial expertise, if you like, that's exactly what Ridgeway and Phantasmo should do. Don't even get in the ring with this man. He's a killer. Now, Walter, as I said, he is undefeated and, and he is a killer. He's seen so dominant. You talk about some of the, uh, the title defences he's had. Will Ospreay, Mark Davis, of course, that was a, a fight or flight. He's been absolutely remarkable uh, in both of those uh, against really, really tough opponents. Two very different opponents, by the way, but very, very tough opponents in Osprey and Davis. Um, there is one ray of hope, I think, if you're Ridgeway or Phantasmo here. And that is, as I'm sure anyone who uh, pays attention to uh, the news, wrestling news on the internet will know, there seems to be a, there's a lot of uncertainty about Walter's contract status at the moment. I don't have any insider knowledge on that, by the way. I can't tell you uh, any more than you already know on that. But... Given that there seems to be a lot of talk about that, he in many ways is the talk of the, the gossip mill in the internet world at the, at the moment, the wrestling world. I wonder whether there is a possibility, just a possibility, that that might be something of a distraction for Walter as he goes into that triple threat match. Well, to be honest, that's a, that's a really good point. It really is. But this is Walter we're talking about. I mean, you and I have sat there at ringside and looked into this man's eyes. And I don't know what you see, Dave, but when I look into that man's eyes, I see 100%, 100 million percent focus and determination. He's, he never wavers, Walter, no matter the circumstances, no matter who he's against. I mean, at Fight or Flight, Mark Davis threw everything he had at Walter, and it wasn't enough. And I, I think you, you've just got to sometimes throw your hands in the air and, and say, you know, yeah, you can try and predict match results and outcomes and Everyone likes a, a title change and every, everyone likes to see a new champion crowned. But sometimes an athlete comes along that there's just no way they're going to lose. And that 
to me is Walter. And I know all the rumours are, are doing the rounds and everyone's talking about it, everyone's buzzing about it. Where is Walter's head at? I think come crunch time, when he gets in the ring with Ridgeway and Fantasmo and he looks across the ring at them and knows both those men want to take his internet title, I think he'll just switch on. And when he does that, I think there's only one result. Now, I, again, I, I understand what you're saying. I do, I do appreciate that. But there is, and you'd be right, I think, if it was Walter versus Ridgeway one on one, or if it was Walter versus Fantasmo one on one, because in either of those cases, with due respect to both of them, that the sheer power advantage, the sheer size advantage that Walter would have, you've got to think would be possibly decisive there. But remember, this is a triple threat match, right? Walter doesn't have to be involved in the decision, whether it's a pinfall or a submission, to lose the internet title to Ridgeway or Phantasma. One of them could pin the other or make the other submit, and we could have a new internet champion without Walter, without Walter you know, still being basically undefeated in the sense that he's never been pinned or submitted. I think that has to be the tactic for both Ridgeway and Phantasma. I don't think you go into this triple threat thinking, OK, for, for the sake of pride, I want to beat the champion, I want to... You know, just it's, wrestlers are full of pride. And I think that pride comes before a fall, <laughs> nine times out of ten. I think if you go in there and you think, OK, I'm going to show the whole world that I can beat this big Austrian, and you disregard the other man into that as well, you're making a big mistake. I think if you're Ridgeway and Fantasmo, you double team Walter, you try and get him out of the equation for as long as you can, and then you turn on one another and stab each other in the back because uh, that's how I like to live my life. Yeah, well, we all know that. I mean, uh, the idea that living, that, you know, taking a strategy that you used in your life is going to be a successful one uh, in an internet title match is, is um, quite the delusion, even by your standards. But let's let's look a little bit at the two challenges. Ridgeway has been incredibly successful. There's no doubt about that in in a lot of promotions around Britain and elsewhere. But his his record in Defiant Ridgeway actually isn't that impressive he's only he's only had three matches previously in defiant he defeated chris brooks uh at stacked back in august to become the number one contender but that was the first of his three matches that he's that he's won here in defiant um he had a, a hardcore title opportunity last december that he uh wasn't successful in in his debut and so ridgeway at least in terms of defiant wrestling is actually kind of an unproven quantity isn't he so the, what you're saying then, Dave, is you believe that Chris Ridgway is coming into this with a chip in his shoulder? Is that right? Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's one way of, of interpreting it. But what I'm saying is you look at the records of, of Walter or, or Fantasmo, who I'll talk about in a second, and you think those two guys uh, have tremendous momentum here in, here in Defiant. Ridgway, and again, it's no, I, I don't mean any disrespect to Ridgway, he, he earned his number one contenders match based on his reputation that he'd built in other promotions. And he won that match fair and square against Chris Brooks. So there's no no argument from me that he's a, a deserving number one contender. But my point is he's yet to really find his feet here in Defiant. He's yet to get that big victory that, uh, that you know, he can use as a statement, as a declaration of I'm Chris Ridgway and I'm here to dominate this promotion. Well, this could be his moment, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to say it with supreme confidence, in fact, it's not going to be at Walter's expense. Now, back to your point, it could be, you know, he could beat El Fantasmo. That's not out with the, the realms of possibility, but I believe that beating Walter is. There's just something about this guy, Dave. He actually scares me, to be honest. And yes, Ridgeway and Fantasmo are excellent, and they're, they're phenomenal um, performers and, and great wrestlers and, and very deceptively tough guys in Phantasmo's case. But when it comes to Walter, he's all of that and more. And he, he's just a beast. He really is. And if Ridgeway wants to make a wants to make a name for himself at anyone's expense, please, please, please let it be Phantasmo and not Walter. Otherwise we'll be carrying that young man out on a on a stretcher. Now, El Phantasmo, for his part though, he he's only been here in Defiant since that Ringmaster tournament, of course, that two-night tournament uh, in July. But he, he made the final of that. He came second in the in the final, that fatal four-way elimination match. He lost that eventually to, to John Badbone's Klinger. But since then, he's also beaten Will Ospreay to become the number one contender. He beat Brent Banks as well. It refused to lose. So, so if you're El Fantasmo, you've got every reason to think that you're on a roll here in Defiant and... and Maybe I, I wonder if you're gonna if you're gonna pick a moment for someone to upset Walter, 
right? If you're going to, even though, again, if you, if you do a, you know, a tale of the tape, yes, Walter looks like the favourite. But you, if you're going to pick a moment with all this uncertainty going on with Walter and his contract that I talked about, with the fact that he doesn't have to be pinned or submitted to lose the match, and the fact that you've got one of those two opponents in El Fantasmo who is on a roll here in Defiant, is it just maybe like the perfect storm where El Fantasmo possibly can take advantage of the, of the circumstances and leave with the internet title? It might be, but about 85 to 90% as much of that of my brain, and it's quite a, a large brain, um, so about 90% of that and my thoughts veer towards no, to be honest with you, simply because of the deciding factor. Listen, if this was anyone else in Walter's shoes, you know, anyone, pick a name out of any wrestling promotion worldwide, I would say that Ridgeway and Fantasmo have a shot. But again, I'm, I'm never going to be sick of saying this because it's the truth. This big Austrian, this internet champion that Walter is, is so, so impressive. And he has impressed me for a reason. It's not without merit. Every time he looks like he might be beaten, we've seen it against Will Osprey, we've seen it against Mark Davis, etc., etc. Every time Walter looks like he might crumble and fold and lose that internet championship, he comes up trumps and he walks away with it. And meanwhile, his opponents, they find that their chest has been caved in from one of those big bear paws that he hits them with. All right, well, we will find out. It is the opening match in the return of Loaded. If you want to let us know your thoughts, by the way, ahead of uh, Sunday, December 9th, when that match airs on YouTube, if you've got any thoughts whatsoever on who you think is going to leave with the internet title, don't forget our Twitter handle is at Defiant Rest. That's Defiant, W-R-E-S. Use the hashtag Reloaded and let us know who you think is going to win the internet title match. We've got much more to talk about. I want to move on to another thing. That's not a match, but it's another thing we know has been uh, announced for Loaded, this, the first episode of Loaded, uh, and that is Martin Kirby. Now, Martin Kirby is, has been ordered, as I understand it, to come to Loaded on December 9th, come out and explain what he did at Refuse to Lose. And I think he's got a lot of explaining to do. So for those who don't know what we're talking about, at Refuse to Lose, Martin Kirby competed against his longtime nemesis, Joe Hendry, in an I Quit match. Kirby, to his credit, uh, won that match. Uh, did a lot of damage to uh, Hendry's leg in, in, in the process of winning the match. And then after the match, Hendry, perhaps uncharacteristically, but Hendry offered a handshake. Kirby, rather than accept that, did more damage, basically launched an assault on Joe Hendry. May have done permanent damage. I, I haven't heard from Joe Hendry. I don't know if you have since since refused to lose, but I, I haven't had any updates on his condition. It was one of the most sickening things we've seen in a very long time. And I don't know what on earth caused Martin Kirby to just completely lose his mind. Well, how much time have we got? Because we could be here all night talking about the ins and outs of this rivalry between Martin Kirby and Joe Hendry. As for what you said, Dave, no, I have to be honest, I haven't heard a word from Hendry since that happened. And that's, that's very unlike the prestigious one, to be honest. Not in terms of talking to me specifically, but, you know... I will say this about Joe Hendry, he likes the sound of his own voice, and why shouldn't he? So it's unlike him to be quiet, and that's exactly what he's been after losing that I Quit match. And I don't think it was the, the defeat as such that has caused Hendry to go into some kind of silence or protest or whatever's going on. I think it is exactly what you said, what happened afterwards. Now, you and I sat there and we watched, and we were frankly sickened by what Martin Kirby did. Um, targeting the leg, he, he really wanted not only to make a statement, but to end Joe Hendry's career. And at the end of the day, what everyone's got to remember is when you break all this down, yes, we have bombastic personalities, we have huge egos in every wrestling locker room across the globe, but these men are human beings. And what Martin Kirby did almost crossed the line. But saying that, Dave, and this is where you're going to disagree with me, obviously, because you have to pick fault in everything I say, Maybe, just maybe, if you actually look and have some time to digest what Martin Kirby is saying, maybe he has a point. Maybe, well, just maybe, Defiant Wrestling haven't done enough for Martin Kirby over the years. Seriously, yes, that's your defence of Martin Kirby, is to say that Defiant haven't given him enough opportunities. I mean, that's baffling. That even, by your, even for you, that's baffling. Well, on what grounds is it baffling? On you go, have the floor. Well, Look, I'm just off the top of my head, right? Kirby says he doesn't get any opportunities. He had a title shot 
against Rampage this year. In fact, he's had a, he had a title shot against every single champion that's, that there has been since he lost the title. Austin Aries, Marty Skrull, Joe Hendry. He was given a place in the Ringmaster tournament, which you know could have earned him a, a title shot if he'd won it. He had a uh, he was part of the qualifiers for the Magnificent Seven briefcase this year. He was in the No Regrets Rumble, which he won. He's been general manager for goodness sake. I I don't know what else Defiant Management could do to convince you, or, or particularly to convince him, more importantly, that he's had every opportunity going because he has. Well, well, all I'm saying is that frustration had to come from somewhere. It wasn't born out of nothing. You know, like what he did to Joe Hendry at the end of that match. Yes, they've hated each other for the longest time. And yes, Joe Hendry has committed heinous acts on Martin Kirby as well, by the way. Don't think for one second that I'm, I'm forgetting that. But there seemed to be more to it than that from Kirby's perspective. Yeah, But two wrongs don't make a right as well. So I'm, I've heard this argument a few times from apologists for Martin Kirby saying, oh, well, Hendry's done bad things to him in the past. But that, that doesn't excuse doing what Kirby did to Hendry. Uh, uh, refuse to lose as I say I still don't know whether Joe Hendry when or if Joe Hendry will be able to compete again after the damage that Martin Kirby did to him before and after the match or sorry during and after the match I should say I, I, I honestly don't know if Joe Hendry is going to be back and that is something that if Martin Kirby had a shred of a conscience would be causing him to lose sleep well I, I can I can bet you a hundred quid right now that it isn't you know you can you can tell by by Kirby, there's something has snapped in that man. He, it's almost like he's lost his damn mind. Or maybe, again, just to play devil's advocate here, because, you know, I love to do that. What if he hasn't lost his mind? What if these are all, you know, conscious thoughts? And what if he knows exactly what he's doing? And that's what it seemed to be. You know, again, this frustration had to come from somewhere. It, it, was, it was so explosive and so violent. And the rage was so incredible that it wasn't over nothing. That's all I'm saying. But... You know, we're going to have to wait and see. Neither of us have the answers. The only one that can explain himself is Martin Kirby. Well, we will hopefully get those answers when Kirby is required to come and explain himself. And as I said, he's got a lot of explaining to do on that first episode of Loaded. Again, Sunday, December 9th, 7 o'clock UK time uh, on YouTube. And uh, let us know what you think. Again, with that, use the hashtag Reloaded. Tweet us at Defiant Rest, Defiant W-R-E-S, uh, and tell us what you think we're going to hear from Martin Kirby. And if there's anything, frankly, that he can say that can possibly justify what he did at Refuse to Lose, because I can't think of anything. Um, there is, I, I said earlier that we had a couple of matches announced. I forgot there's a, there's a third match announced that I also want to talk about. And this is an interesting one. It's a tag team match uh, for the first episode of Loaded. And that is involves our, our world champion, Rampage. So Rampage is having uh, successfully seen off the challenge of the ringmaster, John Bad Bones Klinger, in the main event of Refuse to Lose. Um, was immediately confronted at the end of that match by David Starr. David Starr, of course, beat Nathan Cruz earlier in the night. Cruz then uh, came and jumped Starr before we had a chance to find out why Starr was was coming out there. So we'll talk about Cruz and Klinger and where they fit into this uh, in a minute. But it's going to be Rampage and Starr versus Klinger and Cruz. Um, before we get onto the match itself, let's go back to Refuse to Lose and talk about why on earth David Starr was coming out there in the first place. Why do you think David Starr was appearing on the ramp there just as Rampage was celebrating at the end of Refuse to Lose? Well, there was a key word in my point about Martin Kirby, and that was frustration. But arguably, Dave, in Defiant Wrestling, there's been no one more frustrated this year than David Starr. You know, we all know the history where he was the nearly man in the internet title picture for so, so long, and you can see that it got to him. And the only thing I can think of, and this sounds almost crazy to say, it really does when you think about who he's going after, but the only thing I can think of is maybe Star just thinks he wants to prove something to not only himself, but the whole world that he can get the job done when it matters most. And that's why he's going after the alpha male of, of Defiant Wrestling, and that is the Defiant World Heavyweight Champion, Rampage. But the, the question is, what, what, what's going to be the end result? You know, these men have to team together on Loaded, and they're going up against two super dangerous men who, you know, the only thing Cruz and Klinger care about is causing damage to their opponents, and they clearly love getting in the middle of anything that's going on with Rampage and his title. So, you know, this, this, is, this is an incredibly volatile situation. Now, Star being involved or trying to interject himself into the world title scene, if, if that's what he's doing. And I, I agree with you. I think that probably is 
why he was out there because he has a history of that, right? He, he came out to challenge uh, Travis Banks, uh, who was the internet champion at the time. And that's how he tried to insert himself into the internet title scene. Um, Star coming out to do that just a few months ago wouldn't, again, with respect to David Starr, wouldn't have had a lot of merit because David Starr, not, not, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but Starr went on a very long losing streak here in Defiant in singles matches. It was a full year where he didn't win a singles match, but then that turned around dramatically uh, at the Ringmaster tournament where he beat, uh, who did he beat? Nathan Cruz, he beat Omari. Uh, and then in the final, um, he he would have won but sorry, he didn't beat Cruz in the, in the qualifiers. He, he beat Cruz in the final, pinned him, and then Cruz came in and cost David Starr the match. I think David, so the way Starr was performing in that final, Starr was probably on course to win the Ringmaster tournament. And so there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Starr has upped his game and he is now very much in those upper echelons where he is he is deserving of a, of a world title opportunity. Um, but there's a long line as well. And you just wonder whether... Star sees how competitive that world title scene is in Defiant, and he just thought that the only way he can put himself to the front of that queue was to force the issue. Yeah, I, th- I think that's spot on. I really do. I, I really do believe, and I hate to make a habit of agreeing with you, but it, it, it's the truth. You know, David Starr wants to make an impact. He wants to prove to everyone that hey, this losing streak that he was on, it was a it was a mere blip. In his career, I think you've got to look at the kind of athlete that David Starr is. He's a very well studied guy. You know, he's very, very smart, very well spoken. He does his homework. You best believe it. And he will have seen what has happened to others in the history of Defiant Wrestling. Do you remember, for example, Bradshaw, the the incredible losing streak that Gabriel Kidd was on? And it only Mm. took one victory, just one win, to turn his career completely around, flip that switch the momentum started going in his favour. Maybe, or perhaps Star has looked at that and thought, hey, that could be me. And he knows he's further down the line than Gabriel Kidd was at that point in his career. But I, I just think, you know, I just wonder, is it smart to target Rampage? I mean, this is, uh, I talk about Walter as if he's a beast, but Rampage is the champion for a reason. Yeah, I mean, Rampage has been undefeated here since February. He won the title in April since then. He's beaten Kidd, of course. He's also beaten Klinger, who I talked about. He's beaten Hendry and Kirby, who we were talking about a minute ago, all, all in title matches this year um, as well. And and the interesting thing, with, uh, I can think of at least two of those four matches I just listed, where both of us on commentary, at one point or other in the match, thought Rampage was done. Right? We both we, we thought both certainly against Kid and against Klinger, we both thought we both said, no, that's it. He can't he can't get up. And every single time he comes through. Every single time Rampage gets up and somehow retains the world title. So if you're David Starr and you're going to come after Rampage, you had better be in the form of your life. Because if you're not in the form of your life against Rampage, you're going to shorten your career, let alone lose the match. And the thing is as well, Bradshaw, to your point, Rampage has been injured an awful lot. You know, He's been hurt in wrestling tough, tough matches against some of the elite performers and wrestlers in, in pro wrestling today. And every time he gets the job done, every time he comes back and he wins, and that's what he does. He's a serial, serial winner. He's one of the best wrestlers in the United Kingdom, and not only that, around the world, and everyone knows it. It's not like it's a big secret, and I think that goes into Star's thinking. I think that's why he's he's targeting Rampage, and he thinks if he can only upset the apple cart and become the new defiant... I mean, if you, if you actually look at it this way, Dave... If Star tried to work his way up the ladder of contention, it was going to be a long, long road because we've got so many viable contenders and defiant wrestling who want a crack at Rampage. So he wanted to jump the ladder, get in Rampage's face and say, hey, what about me? I'm here. I'll take you on. Knowing that Rampage is such a competitive guy that it might just work. And it looks like it's getting the job done. This is an an incredibly interesting scenario. I'm going to be super interested to see how these guys can coexist. Well, yeah. And in particular, because Nathan Cruz and John Klinger, Bad Bones, are going to be coming into that tag team match wanting nothing more than to drive a wedge between those two. Because, uh, you know, they know Rampage isn't stupid. Rampage knows that Star was coming out there to challenge him. I think everyone is assuming that's why Star was out there. And so if you're Nathan Cruz or John Barbones Klinger, who both desperately want a win after losses that refuse to lose, what better strategy could you have than to try and sow some kind of seeds of distrust between Rampage and Star? It's true. And and if you look at it, 
Cruz and Klinger, they're not friends. You know, the only thing they've got mutually in common is that they hate Rampage and they hate David Starr. That's really it. Because if you actually look at it, Nathan Cruz wants another piece of the product because he lost the star that refused to lose. And Klinger hates everyone. He just likes inflicting pain and violence and misery on them. And he came up short against Rampage for the Defiant title. So he's going to be pissed off. So this is just such a volatile scenario. You know, it's, it's just one of these things that, you know, we're at ringside, but we might have to do some commentary on this one after the fact in studio, I think, for our own safety. Well, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. But that, uh, that situation, to cap off everything else that's going on in that first episode of Loaded, is going to be uh, quite something. Again, let us know what you think about this uh, interesting dynamic developing between Rampage and David Starr. Uh, again, the hashtag Reloaded, and our, our Twitter is uh, at Defiant Rest. Um, we're about out of time. But just to recap here, um, so there's that tag match we were just talking about. That's going to be on Saturday, on the 9th of December, uh, on that first episode of Loaded. We've got Omari and Lucky Kid having their second match of, of their series. Omari looking to go 2-0 up there. And, of course, we're kicking things off with that internet title triple threat match between Walter, Ridgeway, and El Fantasmo. Plus, Martin Kirby's going to be there to uh, address uh, his actions that refuse to lose. Uh, Gabriel Kidd and Primate presumably are, are going to be in the same vicinity as each other, which could be uh, volatile to say the least. The anti-fun police have got their uh, cunning plan they're developing as well. So much going on for that first episode of Loaded. It's going to be something. It's going to be incredible. And, and, and as you said, that cunning plan that I know so, so much about from the anti-fun police. Um, you know, like I'm always switched on, Dave. You know that. I know everything. I've got eyes and ears everywhere i wish there was a switch to switch you off so that would be too much to hope for i suppose do you just hate everything that i stand for is that is that what's going is this going to be the case every single week here on on the kennedy rundown it's not called that and yes and i'd like to point out it's not kennedy looks rundown it's just simply two words kennedy rundown it's a, a really smart title i was up all night thinking about it you know like i was going to make a list but why make a list when the first thing you think of is so great you know yeah, I'm sure, yeah. You're up all night and you thought of one thing. Brilliant. And it's basically your own name and then one more word. Anyway, we're out of time. So uh, don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Dave Bradshaw. What's your Twitter? I don't follow you, so I don't know. Or do I follow you? Maybe I follow you to spy on you. Well, you know, on a daily basis, Dave Bradshaw unfollows me and then follows me again, unfollows me. It's like you're trying to get my attention. And it's just plain sad. You know, like it's, that keeps me up as well because I worry about you. I'm sorry. I... I I was asking for your Twitter handle, not for your, your life story. So do you have a Twitter handle? Do you want to tell people? Trying to look out for you, give you some life advice. But anyway, you can follow me and, and get some of that life advice and managerial expertise on top of that at Top Class Kennedy on Twitter. All right. Well, we will be back next week after that first episode of Loaded with our thoughts on everything that has uh, gone down on that first episode and previewing episode two, of course. In the meantime, thank you very much uh, for listening. For James R. Kennedy, this is Dave Bradshaw saying we will see you next week for another episode of Reloaded.